Hello Internet! Today we are beginning what I hope is a three-part series about SignalR. Um, we're, we're going to be trying to integrate SignalR into Unity. I'm sort of taking steps there. Uh, if you're unfamiliar with what SignalR is, SignalR is a client-server communication thing uh, that allows you to send RPCs from clients to a server, which can then broadcast those back out to other clients. So uh, a common use case might be something like a chat app where you want to send a, a message that everybody in the server receives. Uh, we're going to be doing this in Unity. So the, the intention, or if, if this actually works, I haven't tried it, um, but what we're hoping to get to work is that we can actually create a SignalR client inside of Unity that connects to a web page, which means that in real time, um, so there's no reloading or polling required on our side, uh, when somebody sends an update from the website that we're, we're going to create, we can update our game. Um, so this might be something like changing, customizing your player. So for example, changing your name or, or changing the color of your, your player. That's probably what we're going to be working on is just having like custom outfits or, or something. It's going to be really simple because this is just a, a test to see if this works um, before turning this into maybe an actual project. Uh, but yeah, that, that's sort of how we're going to start. So there's, the way this is going to work is the first part. We're just going to set this up um, using stuff that I already know works. <laughs> um, so in this video, we're setting up a client server um, with a server in ASP.NET communicating to a console app in, in, written in C Sharp. Then in the next one, we're going to try to plug this into Unity and bring our console app into Unity. Um, so this way, our console app and Unity will be able to communicate with one another through this server. And then the third per portion, portion, that's the word, um, is going to be using Blazor. Um, so we can build a website out of C Sharp and then use that to communicate back to our Unity project and our console project. So all three of them will be able to communicate with one another and send messages back and forth. Um, so that's, that's sort of the whole scheme there. Um, but we're going to start here and just kind of build this. I do have a few notes just so I don't uh, skip anything. I've already added the package dependency for SignalR. Um, so they're different depending on what you want. Um, this is the uh, dependency for a client. Um, and then this is the dependency for a server. Um, so we're using ASP.NET Core SignalR, which lets you send these messages back and forth. Um, so why would we use this instead of like a, a normal messaging thing? Um, the, the useful thing with this is it's not like a, a polling system. So we don't have to constantly go and pull. Uh, our servers can actually, in real time, take these messages and send them back. So we're not con we're not having to constantly keep asking our server, are there new messages, are there new messages, are there new messages? We'll just get notified when there are new messages. It also means that we can do uh, a little bit more with this. Um, technically, our servers can filter these messages. Um, so for, for example, we could only send updates from our web app to the player who is signed into the game with the same account. Um, so the player on the web page trying to change things isn't changing it for everybody, um, though that could be interesting. Um, so that, that those are some of the things we're kind of playing with. Um, we'll kind of talk through things as as we go. Um, we're going to start with the server, though, just to kind of get that up and running. And then we can add a console app because that's simpler. Um, so again, I do have a few notes just so I don't forget anything. Um, but it's it's relatively straightforward to actually get this working. So we're going to pull this down and just start adding bits. Um, so the first thing we want to do is add some signal R. So first thing is we need to add the signal R service to our app. Um, so just add signal R. Uh, I haven't imported the thing, so this isn't going to work. <laughs> um, so uh, what is the namespace for this? Uh, that's a great question. I'll figure that out later. I think that should be fine. Um, it could just be uh, VS Code not liking something. The, the language server has issues sometimes. Anyway, um, after we've done that, the next thing we, do, we need to do is just add the hub that we're going to actually talk to. The way SignalR works is you establish these hubs, which are endpoints on your server that can represent a whole number of different things. Um, so if you've used RPCs in Unity, for example, it's a similar thing where you can create functions that can be invoked by remote clients. So other game or other players can send requests to other game clients and say, run this function for me. Uh, and that can either be on your on a server or it can be just another client if you're doing a peer to peer type thing. 
Uh, so it works similarly here, and those are hosted inside of a hub. And so what we, what we need to do is kind of publish this hub. So we're going to map the hub, um, and we're going to call this, I haven't thought that far, um, signal, signaler hub, sure. Um, little, little jokey name there. And then, um, sure. Um, so all that really matters is the name here. This is going to be attached onto our web page. So if we host this at like localhost, um, lo localhost slash signaler would be the endpoint to connect to this hub. And then everything else after that will be related to that hub. Um, so yeah, that, that's how that works. Then there's this generic thing, the signaler hub. What is that? Um, one, it doesn't exist. We haven't created that yet. Uh, so we need to go and do that. And so a signaler hub in this case is a how signaler actually communicates these things. Hubs store the remote procedures that can be invoked and, and kind of allow you to delegate those out. Uh, so these are the actual published functions by name that can actually be used. Uh, so to do this, let's just go and create a new um, signaler hub. That's yes. Cool. <laughs> um, and we need a public class called signaler hub and it's going to implement hub which i don't have uh, my language server is not being very help helpful here so this is unfortunate but um, this is sort of the the outline of this by implementing hub we are saying all of the public functions in this class are remote procedures they can be invoked by other things uh, and so that means that we can actually go and invoke these things just because we want to. Um, so in order to actually publish something like this, we can just do create a new public function. Um, so public async function, uh, and we'll just say, uh, what do we want our app to do? I haven't thought this far. <laughs> let's, let's just say change name uh, for now, and we'll send a string of the name <laughs> that we're going to change. Uh, and then we'll do something like this and await. Uh, and what we're going to do is actually find all the clients connected to this hub. Um, so when you connect to a hub, you establish a connection and that's like a persistent connection. As long as the, your game or whatever is running, you'll create a connection that will stay there. And then what we can do is actually go back and look at how all, all the people connected um, and figure out how to, how do we want to send messages? Um, in this case, we want to just rebroadcast all the messages so dot all will send the message to everyone and we're just going to asynchronously send that out to all of them with a update player player name function uh sure uh, we're we're going to just pass in the data that we want to do uh for for this i'm just sending over a string uh, you can send over any class you want uh, but i think just a string for now is probably all we need i think that'll be fine uh really we probably want that in a separate data model but i i haven't gotten that far so uh that might be added later <clears throat> uh and that's it that should be enough for our server to run i think let's see did i do all of that right nope <laughs> um I, am i missing a using statement yes that's a great call <laughs> um uh so uh, we're, we're getting an error because uh, I referenced hubs and hubs don't exist. There is no uh, there is no signature, for example, that you need to match, like no interface that defines these functions. These are just public functions. So the arguments here are up to you. Um, that's just what clients that are trying to invoke this function will send over. Um, and they're strongly typed. So you can type them as strongly as you want and they'll be decoded for you when when they come across. Um, so let's just do a uh, using Microsoft ASP.NET Core uh, signal R. And that, hopefully, will discover a hub. Um, we won't see it, unfortunately. I think that's just a VS Code issue. Uh, but if we run this now, we should see this get started up. Uh, and now we won't see anything because we haven't really, we haven't connected to it yet. But oh, I think that should be enough to actually get our server running. Um, let me just double check quick. Yep. All right, cool. 
Um, so that's our server all, all sorted out. Now we want to actually do our console. So there's our console. Um, there's nothing there right now. So uh, first off, let's uh, give ourselves the namespace we need. So Microsoft uh, and let's do oh this one's here. Cool. Um, so this one's working. I'm not sure why they're doing different things, but that's fine. Uh, so we'll just leave that hello world. That means it's starting. Um, and so what we're going to do is create a hub connection. So we're going to connect to our hub. Um, our server is running on one of these two ports, um, either 7170 or 5078. Um, depending on your, your settings, you might be running in different places. Um, you can customize that with the, with the run command if you want. Um, I just haven't. So we're going to use a hub connection builder. This is going to build our connection to these, this hub that we just created so that we can actually connect to that new thing. Uh, and so with URL and we're just going to grab this one down here. Uh, and we put it at Signaler. So slash Signaler is the hub location. So this little end bit should match what is in here. Uh, and so that's just allowing us to kind of map to that. And then we can build that. And now we have this hub connection that we can use to actually assign callbacks and things related to this. Um, so uh, we want to work with this. So let's do that. Let's do hub connection on. This is going to respond to some data. Um, so we're sending out back a string of a player name change. Uh, and so let's let's work with that. Um, uh, and so what do we call this? Our new thing sends back a message called update player name. So let's go and plug that in and then we can uh, grab our data. So this would be the name and we're just going to invoke a function with it. Um, sure. Let's go and write a line um, and we'll just write out the name. Uh, that's not how you do this. <laughs> there we go. <clears throat> so if you're unfamiliar that dollar sign is an interpolated string, uh, it means that when we can actually insert variables, if we use the curly brackets inside of the, the string, um, so that name will be evaluated from this. Um, so this way we can actually, when we receive a new player name update, we're just going to print that out. Um, let's just do name updated, I guess. Sure. Uh, and that's that. So now we have a callback. So that's everything we need to actually get our basic response working out so we can actually respond to these updates getting sent back. But we actually also want to do a few other things. Um, so what I want to do is first connect. <laughs> um, so connection dot uh, start async. And so I'm using the uh, top level programs. Uh, so it, it will infer that it need, the main method needs to be in async main uh, because I now have a weights in there. Um, so that will be handled for me. I don't need to worry about that. Uh, other than that, this is just actually starting the connection by all of this stuff. Didn't actually start our connection yet. It just was saying, here's where you're connecting and here's what to do when you receive this response. Uh, and then we actually start the connection, which is actually going to create that connection for us and then continue after we get that connection. Um, so we should have some sort of connection string. <laughs> I'm just saying, hey, we connected. Uh, and so what I like to do is just sort of send a quick message that says uh, we connected. So let's do that. Let's uh, invoke this function uh, with the string. And we want to invoke our change name. Um, so again, these functions are referenced by name. Um, so if you change these names, uh, it's going to break all your other RPCs, um, which is a sl slight uh, annoyance, but that's that's just how that works. And then we need to send over our argument. Um, and so this can be just the string of the new thing. So let's just send over um, world of zero because that's that's this channel. <laughs> and so we're going to send over a uh, change name thing to when you sign in, automatically change the name to world of zero. Uh, and that will just do that. <laughs> um, and then uh, let's, I guess we'll stop here and just see if this works because I, I very much could have screwed this up. 
Uh, and so let's do just a console read like that. And so what we should see is hello world printed, and then we should see connected get printed. And then we should see uh, name updated to world of zero. That's the three things that we should see. And we're not printing that anywhere unless we receive this message. And this message goes out to our server and then comes back to us. It's not something that's sent internally. Um, so that way uh, the server can do any pre-processing or anything because they're different functions, right? Um, so we're calling change name, but we're expecting update player name to be invoked. Um, so that, that has to go out to the server and come back to us for that, that message to, to work. Uh, so let's run this and see if we get messages or if I screw this up, hello world connected and then name updated world of zero. So our loop works. Um, we went out, we went out and pinged our server and everything worked. <laughs> um, so before we, I guess, end this portion of the episode, because this is really all I wanted to do here. Um, let's do this so that we can actually have like something and we can actually send information back and forth. Um, so, so far we're just sending a static thing. Let's stop this. And before we stop everything, let's throw in a wait, uh, and stop this like that. And then in between this, let's add some fun magic. <laughs> um, so, uh, how do I want to do this string input equals? I don't know. Uh, oh, I know. I know how to do this. Uh, for some reason, I keep finding reasons to do do whiles, and I don't know if that's a good thing. <laughs> um, uh, so string input is equal to string dot empty. So the empty string is just an empty string. There's nothing there. And what we're going to do is say it, do while input is not or string dot is uh, null or white space uh, our input. So if you as long as you're not inputting an empty string, this loop will keep happening and keep reading the next thing. Uh, so we're going to say input equals console dot read line. So we're going to read until somebody hits enter. And then why doesn't it like this? Uh, could be no. OK, that's fine. <laughs> um, uh, so we'll do this. And then whenever that happens, let's just grab this and send another message. Um, so whenever we read our input, we want to notify that we changed it. Um, if uh, this, OK, this got a little bit weird. <laughs> um, so let's do that uh, and just kind of wrap this so we don't send that empty name change over again. Um, I'm doing this part on the fly. I have not done this at all. Um, I, anyway, <laughs> um, th this is weird, but it should work. Um, so we can now enter, enter new names. And we should be able to actually see those pop up now. Uh, so let's try this. Uh, so we run this. Uh, and now I should be able to try it, say, test. Oh, what? Oh, <laughs> that's not right. Uh, if our string is not null or white space, then send it. Uh, that's my bad. <laughs> Um, uh, so let's try that again. Uh, .NET run. We'll run this. We should see our new name gets updated and then we can send over test and our name gets updated to test. Uh, and so what we can do now is add another one because why not? Um, so let's go into our console app again and run this too. And now we have two clients running. And so these are two separate clients. They, they don't share memory or do anything special. They don't have any way to communicate except sending messages to that server and then receiving the same update. So I can type into either one of these and say, hello. <laughs> um, and we should, uh, I hope, see it come back. Uh, I might need to, we're still reading from our thing. So if I do test, what happened there? I'm not sure. Okay, this is weird. Um, 
I expected that to work. <laughs> um, and it didn't. Uh, input. Oh, because I need to do that. We're going to just get rid of that console.read because it's screwing me up um, because it's, it's stopping afterwards. And so that second, that last input that I'm putting in is not inside of this loop. That's why it's not getting sent over. It's actually from that final thing. So we've already stopped our connection, which is why I didn't get that other message is because we had already stopped the connection. We were already disconnected. So that's important <laughs> just to uh, console read line or write line rather disconnecting cool all right <laughs> slightly less confused so if we start both of these now we get name updated to world of zero and then on the other side we also get that so we updated both of them again um, so if i type test over here both of them update to test uh, and if i type um unity unity test <laughs> um, we get that too um so this gives us a way to kind of send these messages back and forth and this doesn't just have to happen on your computer this can happen to anybody because this server could be running out in the cloud somewhere it could be up in some remote server and your game or in this case our console could be connecting to that uh, and so there's no there's no requirement for this to all exist locally uh, we're just doing that because it's easier to test. Uh, but yeah, that's sort of the idea. So the next step is now to get this so that we can send these strings over to Unity so we can actually update a string inside of Unity. And then the next step after that is to create this text box on a web page so that the web page can actually update this. And then we have a, a full web service that you could open up on your phone and send updates to somebody who is actually playing the game. Uh, so that's the next two, uh, I guess, episodes, uh, I should keep pointing out. I don't know if this is going to work. I've not tried this. <laughs> um, so I know this part works because I've done this before. I haven't done the stuff with integrating this into Unity. That could explode in my face. <laughs> um, so hopefully it all works uh, and we can we can continue this. If not, uh, we'll probably just continue it by adding that web page and moving on from there. Um, but either way, hopefully this is interesting. Um, I found this uh, signal R in particular really interesting. I'll leave some links if you're looking to learn more. I've done an entire series on signal R over uh, when I, on my uh, Microsoft Reactor uh, series. Um, so if you're interested in that, I can try to uh, share those links as well. Uh, and that yeah, that's that's it. So thanks everyone. And if you give this a shot, let me know. Other than that, I'll see you in the next video. So till then, see you, internet.